It's crazy to think that a month has already passed by and we're at the end of July. It's time for another garden tour and I'm going to give you guys an update of what we've been up to the last month as well. Last month, this area had silage tarp on it. I took off the silage tarp because I was going to plant corn here. At the last minute, I decided against it because this cover crop made such a nice thick uh, ground cover that I didn't want to direct sow anything into here. So instead, I'm going to be transplanting some cabbages in this area in the next couple of days. In the month of June, we planted these green beans and now they are pretty much mature. They're getting really close. This is actually a good stage to pick them at because they're not over ripe. They look really good. We haven't had too many problems. We usually have a little bit more pest pressure in the summertime, but so far they've been doing okay. The only pest that we've had is the rabbits. <laughs> Got my bean. <laughs> Save it for later. Save it in my back pocket. <laughs> Here we planted black beans. This is a 90 foot row that I have the black beans on. I planted the black beans on both sides of this trellis. I love planting dried beans, especially for self-sufficiency reasons. It's nice to be able to have those throughout the winter. However, if you have a small garden, I wouldn't recommend growing them just because they take up so much space and you only get a smaller yield than you would think you would get. On this side, I have all of my cowpeas. I would never go without planting these because as many of you know, we have our favorite soup that we make every year. And this is important for making that. That's pretty much all we use the cowpeas for is in that soup. One more thing about the cowpeas here in the South, they are super easy to grow. I would assume they would be a little bit tougher in Northern areas. They really love the heat. They far surpass any of my regular beans that I grow. I have about 50 row feet of sweet potatoes here. They are another super easy crop for us to grow in our location. They basically, I just plant them and forget it. And you can see that they're doing really well. I never have any pest problems or anything like that. And they just grow. It's amazing. <laughs> if you move over from the sweet potatoes, we pulled out the garlic and the onions that were here. We harvested some of the bulb onions and now we're hanging them in the shed. Cam and the kids are just hanging them in the rafters. We have these screens that we lay them on and we're gonna fit as many as we can there. There's no way we're gonna fit them all. So we're gonna dry the rest in our garage. planned on planting something else here. I think I had carrots and cabbage. Changed my mind. I'm moving the cabbages over to where that cover crop was and instead I planted our second succession of corn here. Yeah. You'll see in a minute we already have some corn that's just about ready for harvest. This uh, area of corn will be ready for harvest in the fall. Here's the end of the row for everything. Okay, yeah, I need to get these trellised up. This row here has a lot of basil. It's starting to go to seed now, but we've been picking this for pesto. And then we have peppers in here next to the basil. And we have some purple basil. I don't think I showed that last time. Moving over from the peppers and the basil, we have our determinate tomatoes over on this side. They reach a certain height and then they grow no higher after this and they just bear a ton of fruit all at once. And so all of our tomatoes are now starting to get red and ripe and we're bringing them all in. We're making lots of salsa, spaghetti sauce, all the things right now. But some things you'll notice about the plants right now, they are starting to look a little tired. This is pretty normal for me here. We have had more rain this year. That means that we deal with a little bit more disease on the leaves. 
but it's not going to be a problem because they'll bear all of the fruit right now and then we'll be taking these plants out probably by the end of August. Asparagus is here. It has not changed since the last time we had the garden tour. This is new. I put a silage tarp here. If you remember from last time, I was talking about my strawberries and how we were struggling with all the weeds and stuff like that. I decided to keep one row of strawberries and the other row I am tarping right now to kill off the weeds and the strawberries. And I'm gonna plant something completely different here next year. If you go past that, these are where our potatoes were. If you remember, I was dealing with the blister beetles last month. They pretty much killed off the plants. So we harvested all of our potatoes. Between the blister beetles and the heat, the potatoes are finished for the year. The tops have died off and it's time to get those potatoes out of the ground. In the past, we have left our potatoes in the ground for a while and it helps them to keep longer in storage. However, what happened when we did that is we had a lot of problems with perennial weeds that would creep into that area and then cause problems in future years. The main one being Bermuda grass, which spreads like crazy, especially when it is able to get sun. So we're gonna dig the potatoes up and get them carrying. from them. Now we need to plant something else here for fall and to cover the ground. I'm not really sure what I had on my plan, but I'll figure that out and we'll get that planted quickly. In this area, we had the sedan grass and the buckwheat that was flowering, and then we crimped and tarped it. For these last few rows, we are getting a lot of melons in here. Actually have a ripe one right here. Oh wow, that's split. We've been harvesting a lot of these. It just rained last night, so this is split from the rain. Down at the end, let's go down there. Okay, I'll set this down. So in this area, we have the lemon squash and we have some winter squash. The winter squash are like little baby winter squash, but they're supposed to be super sweet. I have not tried them yet. We always deal with squash bugs and squash vine borers. So far, I have not had any trouble with the squash vine borer, but I do see a lot of squash bugs. I've been trying to duct tape those off, but when, whenever we hit this point in the season, it's always a little bit more than I can keep up with. So eventually at some point, these plants probably will get taken over by squash bugs and die. But I do have plans to have a succession planting of uh, summer squash to take over if this dies off. So here's all of our sweet corn. This is really close to being mature at this point. We did have a really bad like whipping windstorm where some of the sweet corn blew over in the middle of our patch here but the rest of it is still standing so i didn't mess with it at all i just figured it's good that we planted a lot and that we have a succession planting because things like that they just happen we're inside the tunnel and on this side i have my indeterminate tomatoes we've been using this lower and lean method for the tomatoes so far so good on that it is very time consuming to do all of the pruning, but it makes harvesting a whole lot easier. The only issues that we've been having so far is we have experienced more pest problems, maybe because they're more upright and available. I've had more hornworms on these, had more problems with the army worms and other types of caterpillars just seem to really flock to this tomato patch. Other than that, we're getting a great harvest from these. The controlled environment of the tunnel has made it so these tomatoes have had a lot less disease. They don't get that splash up from the ground in the rain. I'm hoping they last quite a bit longer than 
my tomatoes that are outside the tunnel because these are our fresh eating tomatoes. Last time I was talking about, we had arugula in here before. It all went to seed because I was saving the seed, but some of the seed fell down. So it, seriously, like I did not plant any of this arugula and this entire row is filled with arugula. And then in between that, I have some of the dried beans that I did plant here. We had a problem with the dried beans where we had a rabbit or some kind of critter come in here and eat off all the tops, but it looks like they're growing back now at this point. Last but not least, we have the last row here is buckwheat. I just did a quick sowing of this. This matures super fast, but I wanted something to quickly cover this ground so that I had less weeding to do and it helps to keep the soil more alive if you keep plants in it. So buckwheat is here pretty soon. This will be coming out in the next, I don't know, 20 days or so and then we'll be planting a fall crop here. In years past, I've had 15 row feet of cucumbers and I've had hardly any to harvest. This year I have 15 row feet of cucumbers and it is way more than we could ever eat. So it really varies from year to year. This is definitely a very good cucumber year for us. The same as the squash, I'm planning on doing a succession planting of cucumbers. So I have another batch that I'll be actually seeding probably today for the fall so that we can have a harvest then. 